What is up everybody? This is Base Jalaren here again with another video and today I am filming my manga haul for the month of March 2018 and as you can see I've switched it up for this video because I am not looking or feeling my best so I'm just gonna film it like this instead because I don't want to I don't I don't want to show off my face right now. I just feel like crap. But otherwise, let's just get right on to the manga. Let's just talk. We're here to talk about manga, not here to talk about my physical well being. So let's start off with the uh, volume ones and new pickups and such. And we're going to start with Dragon Half, which is a new pickup from Seven Seas. And as you might be able to tell, the um, part of the cover, at least, <laughs> I've blinded you all with it is kind of holographic. It's reflective. It's very, very cool. I really like it. It's a much older series. It's not a part of Seven Seas' um, classics series that's going to be coming out throughout the year that it's all going to be hardcover and stuff, but it is an older series <clears throat> that I think was like um, delayed multiple times. <clears throat> But yeah, it's just a fun little comedy about this dragon girl who has this crush on this idol who also happens to be, like, a dragon hunter. And it's just a fun little comedy. And the one, I have only have one um, problem with this manga. And it's not a problem I usually have with Seven Seas, because Seven Seas usually doesn't have this problem. And it's, the, there are a lot of color pages in this manga. There are, like, not like a, a huge lot. But there is quite a bit. But the way that they've been printed is really muddy and kind of hard to make out. It seems really out of focus. What I'm really hoping is that it's just a printing error with my copy in general and not an overall problem with this release. Because that would be kind of, kind of suck. But other than that, it's a pretty good release and I really like it. And like I said, I really enjoy the, um, the unique um, layout of the uh, cover and the back cover in that part of it is shiny. I like that. That's neat. Next up we have Devilman vs. Hades Volume 1. Since I have jumped on the Devilman train and there's no way that I am hopping off now, I figured I'd just go ahead and pick up the next um, in the Devilman series of manga. I'm definitely looking forward to the classics collection of the original Devilman. But until then, I'm going to sate myself with this and the other Devilman release that Seven Seas has been putting out lately. Next up, we have New Game Volume 1. This is a 4 coma put out by Seven Seas. Um, the anime is on Crunchyroll, but I haven't ever watched it. But I've seen, like, later on in the manga, there are, like, strong Yuri vibes, which I'm super excited about. But right now, we just have Volume 1, but it is damn cute. It is super, super cute, and I absolutely love it. And I can't wait to... I've dug into it a little, but I haven't quite finished it yet. And I can't quite... And I can't wait to finish it, and I can't wait to continue collecting it, because this is definitely a very cute for coma release. Next up, we have Tales of Wedding Rings, which is a release by um, Yen Press. And the reason I got this is actually really fucking shallow. I didn't do it because I liked the premise at all. I bought it because um, later on in the series, we actually get an elf character. And my elf waifu alarm just started going off, and it's all like, Alright, time to, time to see what's up with this elf. Let's see if we can add it to the elf waifu collection. So, of course, I have to pick up Volume 1 before I continue to pick up the other one, so. Yeah, it's Tales of Wedding Rings. It's um, a manga about a guy, it's an isekai, about a guy who's transported to another world with his childhood friend, who is actually a princess from another world, and he winds up, like, marrying her. And it turns out that he has to marry, like, four or five other maidens who have rings of power so that he can save their world. And that's pretty much the concept. It's pretty neat. It's a harem. Pretty basic stuff. I got it for the elf. Who doesn't show up in this volume, but will eventually. Uh, next up we have Mononoke Sharing, which is a new manga put out by Seven Seas by Cool Kyo Sinja of, um, <laughs> ironically enough, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid fame. 
And it's just about this girl, she's like a regular human, and she shares this house with a bunch of other, like, um, monsters and yokai. And it's just a fun little comedy about, like, her living with these monsters and how they interact and stuff. And it's pretty thin, but I really like it. The art's really cute. I really like cool, cool, cool Kyosinja's artwork. Yeah, it's Mononoke Sharing, volume one. Next up, we have Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Now, I, I immediately based this manga, I judged this manga based off of the cover, and I thought it was going to be a lot more of a darker comedy than what it actually is. It's more of just a comedy than dark comedy. <clears throat> About these two students who attend this really elite high school, or middle school, I forget. It's a really, really elite school. And they are both under the belief that if you are the person to admit that you love somebody, you are the loser. And so they both use their high intellect to try and outsmart each other into admitting that the other loves the other one. So they don't wind up being the loser, as it would be. So this is a fun little comedy, and I really like it. And I can't wait for the um, next release. And this is a release by Viz. Yeah, really liking that one so far. And finally, we have a treat for my furry senses, and that is D the DNA, not the DNA, DNA Doesn't Tell Us, <clears throat> which is a manga about um, animals throughout the world are suddenly turning into really cute human girls, and they are all sent away to this school where they learn to behave like humans in a human society so that they may... Um, <clears throat> you know, integrate into human society. And they're all, like, really cute, cute animal girls. And <clears throat> part, of, part of the fun is that sometimes they will change back into animals and then turn back into girls and their clothes will be all ripped. So it's pretty much um, a fan service -y kind of manga. But I really like it because fucking animal girls. Just, I love animal girls, you guys. Just put some cat ears on a girl and it's all like, oh, hell yeah, that's my shit. But yeah, DNA Doesn't Tell Us, Volume 1, Definite, definitely glad I picked that up. And now we're going to move on to Continued Series, and I'm going to start off with stuff that you've already seen before in another video. And that would be Gurren Lagann, Volume 6, and the <laughs> big surprise of Pipo Chu, Volume 3. Once again, thank you, thank you so much, Mar, for sending me these. This was an absolute complete su well, this was an absolute complete surprise, and I am thankful as fuck. I am, I am just absolutely beside myself whenever I like remember that these are in my collection now. Thank, thanks to you, and you, you were just, oh, you were, oh, such a precious person. Uh, I, I could make a whole video just going on and on about how thankful I am, but. I'm just going to just go into these very, very briefly. The final volume of Pipochu. Pipochu Volumes 1 and 2 had a really, really cynical vibe. And I figured that was going to continue on into chapter, into top chapter. Volume 3. But Volume 3 kind of takes, like, this weird turn where it stops being cynical and actually kind of does a complete 180. And I, it, it, it took me by complete surprise. It's, it didn't end in a manner that I thought it would. But it's still pretty cool, and I'm, once again, super fucking glad it's in my collection, and I'm going to treasure this forever. It's going to be a family heirloom. And then, Gurren Logan Volume 6, we get to see uh, Yoko's titties, like, legitimate nipples, so I'm pretty sure I'm on some kind of list now, so, eh, there's that. But yeah, there's those. Absolute fucking wonderful. Next up, we have Children of the Whales, Volume 3. This is a very, very interesting, unique, fantastic um, fantasy series. It's it's got a really unique premise, and I definitely suggest if you haven't gotten into it already, definitely look into it, because it is super cool and unique, and I do believe the anime is airing, <coughs> or is completely up. I don't know how Netflix is handling it, but it's on Netflix. But yeah, I haven't gotten in, I haven't watched the anime yet, and I've read volume one. <clears throat> Still haven't continued on to the series, but for what I've read from volume one, it's a really cool story, and I can't wait to find the time to continue to read this series. 
Next up, we have Land of the Lustrous, Volume 5. This volume finally uh, breaches what the anime covered, and we are and we are gaining new territory here. And we meet a couple new characters. It's pretty much just an introductory sort of thing. It's the calm before the storm. Trust me. This shit's about to go down in Land of the Lustrous. But this is this is the calm. Enjoy the calm, because the storm is coming. And then from then on, Land of the Lustrous just goes. And just keeps going. <laughs> so yeah, this is... Land of the Lustrous, Volume 5. Next we have To Your Eternity, Volume 3. I'm very worried about what happens in the next volume, because um, the way that this series is played out is that our main character happens across, you know, humans that live in, like, like the mortal realm or whatever this is. It might be Earth. And... They interact with them, they, like, build some sort of bond with this character, and then that character dies. And then the main character moves on, and they meet somebody else. And they make a bond with that other person, or that person makes a bond with them, and then they die. And now he's pretty much, like, found, like, a family of sorts, multiple people who are now in his life. And I am terrified that we are going to see the g a gut-wrenching heart-shattering deaths of these people that he's grown to know, and I am absolutely scared. <laughs> but until then, this is a pretty good, pretty good addition to the series. Really, really liking it so far. It's really interesting. Next up, we have Frau Faust, Volume 4. Um, next volume is going to be the last volume. It's a pretty short series. Um, uh, not much I can say about it. I'm, con I'm a little concerned about where it's going, considering it only has one volume, and I'm pretty sure volume 5 is just going to be jam-packed with just action, but it's going to be interesting to see where this manga winds up ending at. I'm really interested to see how it's going to end, that's for sure. Next up, we have today's Cerberus, volume 7. Absolutely loved this volume, only because we get to see, I guess, a side of the character Rose, who's here on the cover, that I've been waiting to see forever. She's my favorite, and just whenever she gets, like, any focus in the story at all, it's just like, yes, Rose! But yeah, that's today's Cerberus, Volume 7. Very nice. Next up we have Anonymous Noise, Volume 7, The Band Drama Continues. Uh, not much I can say about it, it's just, it's your basic so shoujo setup. It's your basic shoujo setup, but with some band elements that's keeping me, keeping me around, is that this, the heavy, like, band element vibe. And I really like these, the covers, the covers of every single one of them so far have just been really, really cool to look at. It's very, very, like, bright colors, very dynamic stuff going on on the covers, and I really like it. But yeah, it's Anonymous Noise, Volume 7. Next up, which is a volume that I haven't gotten into, because I haven't read the volume prior to this, is uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Volume 3. I think there are four or five in this series. It's a little longer than um, all the other Akira Himakawa Zelda series, which were up to one to two volumes long. This one's a little bit longer. They take a little bit more time to flesh out the series than they have in the past. So if you're looking to dip your toes into some Zelda manga and want a more fleshed out complete story, this is probably the one to look out for. Next up, we have that delicious, delicious Yuri for the month, and that is Kiss and White Lily for My Dearest Girl, Volume 5. Um, once again, I really like the concept of the series skips around, like, the whole damn school, where everybody, I guess, is a lesbian. <laughs> and it's all like, here's your couple for the volume, and it's all like, ah, oh, yes, new girls, what drama are they up to? And it's like, it's just so fun. I really like the variety, honestly. 
it's not some, it's not, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. This is definitely a Yuri series that's probably on like the back burner or very low on people's lists, but I honestly really like it. I like the variety. <clears throat> Ooh, shit. Next up, we have volume 12 of Genshiken, which is the final volume of Genshiken second season. The way it ends, it feels like it could go on, but I also feel like it's gone on long enough. I really, really loved Genshiken. This series was an absolute treat from the very, very beginning, the humble beginnings, to this final volume. I would have liked a little less focus on the whole Madarame Harem arc, which lasted a little too long for my liking, but otherwise, this is a fantastic, fantastic series, and I'm very grateful that I got to experience it. Speaking of final volumes, we also have Maria Hollick Volume 14, which is the final volume of Maria Hollick. It kind of ends how I sort of expected it to. It has sort of an emotional core for the ending, but it also sort of ends on like a more of a comedic note. It's very light it's a very light hearted, sort of open ending that kind of feels like like a end of a punchline than the end of a series. But otherwise I really enjoyed this series and I really, really love it. And I'm really glad that um One Piece Books uh rescued this title. Because it was a Tokyo Pop title previously. Uh next up we just have Devilman G. Grimoire, Volume 2. Once again, just adding to the Devilman collection while we wait for the um, the hardcover Devilman release that's coming out in this summer. Uh, something I should, well, probably should stress if you don't really know already, which it's common knowledge about Devilman, but just in case, Devilman, any, any Devilman series, honestly, is very uh, graphically explicit. There's a lot of blood, and there's a lot of titty. So if you're looking for an action series, but are not into the gore or nudity, sexual, like, explicitness factor, Devilman may not be the series for you. Just saying. Next up, we have The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 4. Another fantastic volume in this series. Very dark, fairy tale esque series. Um, this one, it ends on, like, a really big cliffhanger. All of them really have, honestly, but this one especially, I'm kind of interested to see where the series is going to go after how this one ended, which I honestly can't go into because spoilers and such, you know. But if you haven't gotten into this gotten into this series, I definitely suggest you do. It's very unique in how it presents itself and the story is like I said, it's like a very dark very it's like a dark classic fairy tale. And it's just an excellent series and if you haven't gotten into it, definitely give it a shot. Next up, I finally got I Hear the Sunspot Theory of Happiness, which is the uh, follow-up to I Hear the Sunspot. This is twice, maybe a little bit bigger than the size of the first volume. And it kind of just picks up almost immediately where the last volume left off. <clears throat> the, uh, um, the romantic relationship between our two mains finally, like, 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 I felt like it was resolved, sort of, in, like, a very classic sort of shonen eye sort of manner in the last volume, but this one deepens it a little. There's a lot more drama to this one, and, like, there's a lot more story, obviously. It's a lot thicker, and I hear there's going to be another one in the series, but it hasn't been released in Japan yet, so it might be a while before we see another volume of I Hear the Sunspot, but definitely look into it if you're looking for um, some boys love content that isn't very sexually graphic at all, because this is the series for you, for sure. Next up, we have Nirvana, volume two, finally. This series comes out 
at a very slow pace because I don't think it's very far into its release in Japan. So we've been getting the volumes very, very slowly. But this is a really, really excellent isekai series. If you're into that sort of thing and looking for something a little fresh, a little bit fresher than, like, your, like, random guy, every dude, is transported to a new world and he meets all these hot women, Nirvana is definitely more of a switch up from that series, that sort of thing. And in Volume 2, we actually get to learn why the main character is the way that she is, which is, her, she's, a, she's a very charitable person. She does a lot of charity work. She does a lot of, like, stuff out of the kindness of her heart. And in this volume, we actually get to learn why she does the things she does, because she has a reason for why she is weird like that. Why, why she's so charitable. It isn't just, like, a random on a one-off quirk. It actually has a backstory. And we get to learn about it in Volume 2. Next up, we have Beasts of Abigail, Volume 3. Very nice, fluffy shoujo stuff, again, with those beautiful, beautiful animal ears. Mm -hmm. But this one, um, how it ends, I'm very, very excited to see the next volume, because like the, the stakes have been raised, they've upped the ante, and shit's going down. And I can't wait for Volume 4 is pretty much all I can say about this series. It's really, really great. Really, really love it. Oh, shit. Don't fall. <clears throat> Next up, I have To Love Rue, volume, the Omnibus Volumes 5 and 6. I haven't gotten into this one yet. I haven't completely delved into this one. But it's another volume in the To Love Rue series. I believe there are, like, 18 volumes total. 18, 19 volumes. So, we're gonna be... This is gonna be around for a while, but... Maybe when this series ends, I'll look... Oh, shit. I thought it was gonna fall. I'll look into buying, um, To Love Rue Darkness. But until then, I'm just gonna pick up To Love Rue and then see how I feel about it in the end. If I'm okay with how it ends in To Love Rue, and I don't really feel like diving into To Love Rue, um, Darkness... I'll just kind of leave it at that. Next up, we have Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, Endless Waltz, Glory of the Losers, Volume 5. I'm feeling at this point that um, Gundam Wing is more of a pickup that I buy out of obligation than anything, because I love the Gundam franchise. It's a really cool, cool franchise. But I did not get into Gundam the classic way that most people in the West got into Gundam, which was through Gundam Wing, through to, to, through Late Nights on Toonami. I never really was into Gundam until I started dating my husband, and he introduced me... Well, I knew about Gundam, like, it was a thing, but he introduced me to actual, like, Gun, the Gundam series through uh, Gundam 00. So that was my entry point. And I don't have a lot of... um nostalgic feelings about Gundam Wing like everybody else does, but I'm continuing to pick up the series mostly so I can experience the series with everybody else, and I just want more Gundam content so that I can experience it. But yeah, that's volume 5 of Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Next up, we have Scum's Wish, Volume 6, and with each passing volume of this, I feel like it drags you deeper and deeper into, like, the void, and it just... People in the series they just get like weirder and weirder. Like the circumstances get nastier and nastier, and I think we have two more volumes of this until the series is complete. And I look forward to the dark depths that Scum's Wish is planning on dragging us further into. Next up, another volume that I haven't quite read yet, but I'm very excited to is Golden Kamui Volume Four. This is a really cool, cool series. The anime is coming out this season, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, can't wait to watch that alongside reading the manga, get that full, full Golden Kamui experience. This is a fun action adventure series, and I highly, highly recommend picking it up if you want something in that sort of vein. 
You want to see a full-grown man punch a bear? Definitely by Golden Connolly. Next up, we have a Forbidden Scrollery Volume Two, which is uh, the one of the one of the few manga adaptations for the game Toho, which is a game I haven't played, but I'm still able to enjoy this manga because it doesn't feel to me at least like you need a lot of context to figure out what's going on there are some characters and character interactions that are a little unknown to me that happen throughout the series but it's not something that completely pulls me out of the story and the artwork is very nice i really like the artwork it's very solid and very cute and i really really like it so i'm continuing to pick up forbidden scrollery despite the fact i have never played Toho. Next up, we have Sekirei, Volume 3. Haven't gotten to this goodness yet, but I can't wait to see them titties. But yeah, Sekirei, Volume 3. Volume 4 is coming out this month, so I'm going to have a lot of Sekirei content to catch up on when I finally get that too. And finally... We have Sweet Blue Flowers, Volume 3. I'm going to hold off on reading this one until Volume 4 comes out, which it comes out in a month or two, I believe, which is the final volume. So until then, I'm going to hold off on continuing on reading this series so that I can just binge through like the, from here on till the end and just have a nice, nice experience. And once again, this series just gives me hope that um, maybe, possibly... Takako, Takako Shimura's other work, which is, um, oh my god, I've completely forgotten it. Holy shit. I'm a horrible person. But the other one, by Fantagraphics Books, maybe it'll come to me while I'm talking about it. Um, Wandering Sun. Yeah. My memory is a steel trap, y'all. But yeah, I really hope that this series, if it does well enough, that it might, it might cause a stir. And we'll possibly see a series rescue for uh, Wandering Sun, and that is would be a dream come true for me, because Wandering Sun is a series that I've always wanted, but I'm never going to be able to afford to get, and it's, com in a, it not, it's in completion, but it's an entirety that we got over here, because we didn't even get the complete series before it kind of stopped and went out of print, but yeah. Until then, I'm just going to enjoy Sweet Blue Flowers and the hopes that it brings that we might see something else in the future. And, yeah, that is everything that I picked up for the month of March. Um, going forward, I have a couple more in-depth manga collection tours that I need to do, but... Anything from this haul is not going to be in those tours. Just felt like pointing that out well, I, before I film those. It's just going to be my collection prior to my March manga haul. So, yeah, just felt like stating that before I um, signed off here. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, hopefully where I'll be able to show my face. But until then, I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.